In this video, we'll approximate the area under a curve using tall, skinny rectangles. This will introduce the idea of an integral. Let's start by approximating the area under this curve, y equals x squared, in between x equals 0 and x equals 3, by approximating it with six rectangles. There are several ways to do this. For example, I could draw rectangles so that the right side of each rectangle is as tall as the curve. We'll call this using right endpoints. Alternatively, we could line up our rectangles so that the left side of each rectangle is as high as the curve. We'll call this using left endpoints. Notice that the leftmost rectangle in this picture is degenerate and has height 0. If we're using the picture with the right endpoints, then the base of each rectangle has size 1 half, and the height of each rectangle is given by the value of our function, y equals x squared, on the right side of the rectangle. So for example, the area of the first rectangle is its base times its height, which is 0.5 times 0.5 squared. The 0.5 squared comes from evaluating the function at this point, 0.5, to get the height. Similarly, the area of the second rectangle is going to be also base times height. Base is still 0.5, and now the height is going to be 1 squared, or 1. If we continue like this and add up all our areas, we get the area of all six rectangles is given by this expression. Notice that there are six terms here, one for each rectangle. Each rectangle has base of 0.5 and has height given by the right endpoint. We can write this in sigma notation as the sum of 0 0.5 times 0.5 times i squared, where i ranges from 1 to 6. This works because the numbers in parentheses here are all multiples of 0.5. The first one is 0.5 times 1, and the last one, 3, is 0.5 times 6. Now if we compute this sum, we get 91 eighths, which is 11.375. Notice from the picture that this sum of areas of rectangles is an overestimate for the area under the curve. We can do the same sort of computation for this green picture using left endpoints, and we'll get an underestimate for the area under the curve. I invite you to try it for yourself before going on with the video. For the green rectangles, the first rectangle has area 0, the second rectangle has area given by its base of 0 0.5 times its height of 0 0.5 squared. And if we compute all six areas and add them up, we get a similar expression to the previous one, only this time we end with a 2.5 squared, which is the height of our last rectangle. One way to write this in sigma notation is still starting with i equals 1 for the first rectangle, to 6 for the last one. We use the base, and then for the height, we use 0 0.5 times i minus 1 squared. This works because when i is 1, i minus 1 is 0, so we start with a height of 0, like we should. And when i is 6, we get 0.5 times 6 minus 1, which is 0.5 times 5 or 2.5, just like we want it to be. If we add up this sum, we get an answer of 55 eighths, which is equal to 6.875, which is an underestimate for the true area under the curve. Now, there's a big gap between 6.875 and 11.375, so it'd be nice to get tighter bounds on the area. One way to do this is by using more rectangles. For example, 12 rectangles instead of 6. 
Again, we could choose to use right endpoints, which gives us an overestimate of area, in this case, or we could use left endpoints, which gives us an underestimate. The area of the ith rectangle is given by the base times the height, and the base is going to be, in this case, 0 0.25, while the height is given by the function's value on the right endpoint. The right endpoint of the ith rectangle is going to be 0 0.25 times i, and the function is the squaring function, so that height will be given by 0.25i squared. The area of all the rectangles can then be given by the sum from i equals 1 to 12 for the 12 rectangles of 0 0.25 times 0 0.25i squared. If we work out that sum, it comes to 10.156. Again, we can do the same thing with left endpoints. Now the area of the ith rectangle is given by base times height, which is 0.25. And now the height is given by the value of the function on the left endpoint. So that's going to be 0 0.25 times i minus 1. And we need to square that since our function y equals x squared is giving the height of our rectangles. So the area of all the rectangles together is going to be the sum from the first rectangle to the twelfth rectangle of 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 times i minus 1 squared. That works out to 7.906. So we're honing in on the actual area under the curve. Now it's somewhere between about 8 and about 10. We can keep getting better and better estimates of area by using more and more rectangles. For example, if we want to use 100 rectangles, then our area of all rectangles, using right endpoints, is going to be given by the sum from i equals 1 to 100 of the bases times the heights. Now the base of each rectangle will be one hundredth of the length here from 0 to 3. In other words, the base will be 3 over 100. The ith right endpoint, which I'll call x sub i, is going to be just 3 over 100 times i. Since you get to the right ith right endpoint, by taking i copies of a rectangle of width 3 one hundredths. Therefore, the ith height is going to be given by this ith right endpoint squared, or 3 one hundredths times i squared. So we can write our sum of areas as sigma from i equals 1 to 100 of 3 one hundredths times 3 one hundredths times i squared. The formula using left endpoints is similar. The ith left endpoint is going to be 3 one hundredths times i minus 1, since if we're using left endpoints, we only have to travel through i minus 1 rectangles to get to the left endpoint of the ith rectangle. So our area for the left endpoints becomes the sum from i equals 1 to 100 of 3 over 100 times 3 over 100 times i minus 1 squared. These two sums work out to be 9.1435 and 8.8654. And at this point, you might be willing to wager a guess that our exact area under the curve is probably going to be 9. But to determine the exact area for sure, let's do this process of dividing into rectangles one more time, and this time we'll just use n rectangles, where n is some big number. Since we're dividing an interval of length 3 into n little pieces, the width of each subinterval 
in other words, the base of each rectangle, will be given by 3 over n. I'll call this delta x as a little tiny bit of x. Now the right endpoint, x sub i, is given by 3 over n times i. Since we have to travel through i rectangles, each of width 3 over n, in order to get to that right endpoint. So our height, h sub i, is given by the function's value on that right endpoint. We can work out similar expressions for the picture using left endpoints here. Our estimate of area using right endpoints is then the sum from i equals 1 to n of 3 over n times 3i over n squared, and our estimate using left endpoints is the sum from i equals 1 to n of 3 over n times 3i minus 1 over n squared. The more rectangles we use, in other words, the bigger the value of n, the closer our estimated area will be to our exact area under the curve, and therefore the exact area is given by the limit the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum, which is known as a Riemann sum. There are really two possible limits we could use, right endpoints or left endpoints, but as the picture suggests, these two limits should turn out to be the same thing. In fact, there are other options besides using right endpoints and left endpoints. We could, for example, use the midpoints of our intervals to compute our areas of rectangles and that limit should also end up as the same thing. So we have an expression for the area under the curve y equals x squared between the values of x equals 1 and x equals 3, and that's given by the limit of this sum, called a Riemann sum. I'll stick with the right endpoint version for now. Com to compute the exact area, we have to evaluate this limit, which is tricky. I'm going to start by rewriting since 3 and n don't involve the index i, I can pull them outside of the summation sign. I'll clean this up a little bit. Now we'll you need to use the fact that the sum of the first n squares of the integers is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. We can check that formula for a few values of n. For example, if n equals 2, we're summing up 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 5, and we're plugging in 2 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 over 6 from the formula, which also equals 5. If we use this formula in our limit calculation, we get this expression, which simplifies to 9 halves by dividing 27 by 6. We can cancel a copy of n and get n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over n squared. I'm going to pull out the 9 halves, and now I observe I have the limit of a rational expression where the highest power term on the numerator is going to be 2n squared. The highest power on the denominator is just the n squared. So that's going to be a limit of 2. Multiply that by my 9 halves, and I get a limit of 9, just like I expected from the previous work. So that was a big production, but we did successfully find the area under the curve, and it was 9. In this video, we approximated the area under a curve by taking the limit, as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, of the area of the rectangles, which is given by a sum called a Riemann sum of the bases times the heights of the rectangles. The bases are often written as delta x, and the heights are given by the function's value on the left endpoint or the right endpoint or some other point in the interval. For our purposes, 
f was always x squared, but this sort of expression, called a Riemann sum, can be used more generally to evaluate the area under any continuous function.